Welcome to Outlook Video for July 2015. Supervisor Ken Yeager talks about a new LGBTQ affair office in San Jose. Gay Pride. Let's hear Bennett Mark's personal thoughts on this important phrase. Welcome, Stephanie Teal. Stephanie Teal performs her song, Two Hours. On this July 2015 edition of Outlook Video. And welcome to the July 2015 edition of Outlook Video, your award-winning monthly news magazine for gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender communities. I'm Alice Heimso. And I'm Raymond Donald Hong. We're pleased you're joining us for this month's Outlook Video. We'll start with Jay Raley interviewing Ken Yeager, the first openly gay supervisor elected to office in Santa Clara County in 2006. Supervisor Yeager will talk to Jay about a new LGBT affairs office in San Jose and how it will benefit our community. Back again this month, Bennett Marks will share another of his thoughtful editorials with us. We're capturing this show in June, the month most associated with gay pride celebrations around the country. While many of us may self-identify as gay, the term gay pride, as Bennett's personal insights reminds us, has a much mm -hmm. wider meaning. A native San Franciscan and veteran of the all-woman band, the Al Bello Review, will have Stephanie Teal with us later in the show. I'll have a few questions for her and she'll perform one of her songs for us live in this studio. That's our lineup for this month's show. Now let's join Jay Raley in conversation with Santa Clara County Supervisor Ken Yeager on the LGBTQ Affairs Office. As Santa Clara County strives to create a more inclusive environment that supports the diversity of our community, Supervisor Ken Yeager lays the foundation for a new LGBTQ Affairs Office in San Jose. Ken Yeager was the first openly gay supervisor elected in 2006. He's here now to talk about this new LGBTQ office and explain how it will support our community. Welcome, Ken, again to Out Video. Great, it's good to be here with you. Ken, can you explain the uh, motivation in creating the LGBTQ Affairs Office? Well, I knew from a, a health assessment that we had done in 2013 of the LGBTQ community that there were a lot of uh, unmet needs. Um, that the county provides a lot of services that LGBTQ people use, uh, but uh, the feeling was that the services were not being as effective as they could be. I was also concerned about um, county employees uh, who uh, were LGBTQ and whether they were um, being uh, treated with respect and getting the promotions uh, that they deserved and that county employees were also uh, aware of the issues in the LGBTQ community. And so when I put, sort of put this all together, um, I knew that I would only be in office for, uh, this is my last term, for four more years, and wanted to keep something more permanent in place uh, that would work on these issues. It's sort of an outreach to our community, as well as a, a go-to place for employees of Santa Clara County, if they have gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender issues. Yes, uh, over the last uh, several years, we've done training for people mainly in the juvenile justice system. Uh, over um, 800 people who have sort of gone through sensitivity training uh, about LGBT issues, uh, particularly LGBTQ youth, um, just, just to have our juvenile justice system be sort of be more welcoming and understanding, and understanding that too that a lot of the kids that are going through that system are gay or lesbian or transgender. And it's just to make them um, provide better services, uh, to be more aware, not to feel like they should isolate these kids or, some, or separate them. And we just got such positive feedback. It made me realize that with all the services that we provide, particularly in healthcare, mental health, dr drug and alcohol, all those kind of services where we have contact with LGBTQ people, um, our employees need to be uh, aware of the issues and provide the best services possible. Now we're lucky to live in Santa Clara County and California in general, but um, 
And the police also uh, have sense, are they, do, uh, do they get training on, on the LGBTQ issues as well? They have in the past, and uh, Wigsy Stevenson and I, when we uh, had founded uh, Baymac uh, almost an eternity ago, <laughs> um, there was a, a, a police shooting of a transgender youth mm. uh, in San Jose. Uh, this was in uh, about the mid 80s, and uh, we were able to do sensitivity training for our police officers. Uh, but we've also now we're doing it with the sheriff's department. So um, I think we're finding um, um, public safety being m much more aware of our issues. Uh, the POA had a, a gay policeman as its president and now has okay. an openly gay officer as its vice president. So uh, things are sort of moving in a very progressive way here. But we still realize that it's, it, it's tough for a lot of LGBTQ uh, people um, when they have uh, issues, uh, but, but particularly for our youth. I hear that you, you did this survey, and I was surprised to see that some of the statistics haven't really nudged that much in all these years. And could you go, uh, could you maybe cover some of those alarming statistics of some of our youth and maybe other? You know, it's hard to get your head around so much that is happening when you think about gay marriage and right. gays in the military. And then on one level, you could say, oh, we have made such progress. But, you know, we know as LGBTQ people, it's still rough, you it know, is, particularly right. when you're growing up and you sort of feel like an outsider and you might have negative feelings about yourself. They all don't sort of go away as you get older and become an adult and sort of more uh, productive. You still have to sort of deal with a lot of these issues. And we have found when it comes to health care, we have found 40% of the seniors don't even mention to their primary care deliver that they're gay. Really, that seems pretty important. Too. It seems pretty important. 10% of the respondents said that they had felt discrimination from their health provider. So you sort of see those very high levels. Over 10% of the homeless people in Santa Clara County are LGBTQ. Is that now? That's a higher proportion than the average population. Yeah, that's right. Where the, you know our population is around three or four percent. Okay. Uh, we're we're finding you know 50% of uh, transgender people have attempted. Um, a suicide. Oh, that's a very high number. So all of these numbers um, uh, are, are high, and we've also found that 50% of LGBTQ people um, have mental health and um, drug abuse um, um, issues that they need to have addressed. And so these are underlying problems that still exist in, 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 the, in the county, uh, certainly probably nationwide as well. And I just want to make sure that um, the people that are providing those services to LGBTQ people are doing it in the appropriate manner and that the services are, are even there for our population. Okay, so last question. Is this the first of the LGBTQ um, in, in the in the in the world, world absolutely. <laughs> you know, it, um, there's two cities, um, Philadelphia and Washington, D.C., uh, which have a similar office, but none exist anywhere else, no other county. Um, sometimes there will be a, a liaison to the LGBT community, or there might be a commission dealing with these issues. Uh, but here we will have staff members dedicated uh, to these issues to really make sure that our population is well served. blazing the trail here. It's very exciting. Well, to find out more about the new LGBTQ Affairs Office in San Jose, you can contact the general office at 408-299-5040 or email ken at supervisor.yeager at bos.sccgov.org. Ken, thanks so much for being Great here. Great to be with you, Jay. On the next edition of Outlook Video, we go to San Francisco to celebrate pride without exceptions. Here's a bit of what you'll be seeing next month. sure to tune in next month for Pride Without Exceptions on the special Pride edition of Outlook Video.